What do you mean you aren't training your suboccipitals? So neck training, let's get into it. Why would you want to train your neck? There's actually been something of a neck renaissance lately with more and more people suddenly interested in training their neck. And there's two big reasons that a lot of people give for this. The first is obviously aesthetic. A lot of people like the way that a big neck looks. If you have a really big bulky body, muscular, but you have a very scrawny thin neck, it looks really odd. And if you're someone who works out, if you're a bodybuilder, then often your neck is one of the only things that people see. If you want to avoid the Ned Flanders effect, then you want a big thick neck so that people know you work out. Your neck is actually a site of much higher androgen receptor density. The same goes for the traps. That means that if you have high levels of testosterone, you have a thicker neck and bigger traps. This in turn gives off a kind of alpha vibe. So if you want to look mean and in charge, then a thick neck is a good way to go. The other big reason that people tend to give is so that they can avoid concussions. The bigger and stronger your neck, the greater you'll be at absorbing impacts straight to your head. While this is all good and well, it's not the reason that I'm interested in training your neck. You see, your neck actually has a ton of other useful benefits that make it really important for general performance. After all, your neck houses the conduit between your brain and the rest of your nervous system. That makes it really important. And that's why damage to the neck is so serious. It's also why training your neck has actually been shown to improve the transmission of these signals thereby potentially improving things like proprioception, possibly even mental performance. Similarly, training your neck can actually potentially improve your VO2 max. If you train the scalene muscles, these actually work a little bit like a pump when they contract and relax, thereby acting as a kind of pump creating pressure differentials to support the function of the lungs. But beyond this, your neck is crucially important for stabilizing your head and keeping it steady when you're running, when you're fighting, when you're jumping. You have lots of little muscles in your neck and these all work to support your head, keeping your gaze steady and counteracting the movement of your body when you're running, for instance, which is obviously going to affect your speed and performance. Likewise, if you start falling, your neck is extremely important for balance. It helps to keep your center of gravity correct. And actually, there's a higher density of muscle spindles in your neck as well. The muscles are highly proprioceptive, meaning they're giving lots of feedback to the nervous system, helping you to balance. The neck is also what we use to intentionally rotate and move our skulls, whether we're dodging a punch or whether we're tracking an object with our gaze. Just things like rate of force development are actually really important for the neck. And if you want to track something, your eyes normally move first, followed by your neck. Your neck instigates the movement for the rest of your body. Or as well-known neck training advocate Mike Gittleson notes, where your gaze goes, your body follows. In other words, you need to look at something before you can run towards it, and your neck plays a huge role in this. All this comes under the topic of eye-head coupling. In fact, to demonstrate this, try standing completely still and looking forwards. Then place one hand on the back of your head and try moving your eyes, and you'll feel the tiny muscles in your neck moving. This is happening in order to prepare your neck for movement to follow your gaze. That's the splenius capitis by the way. And finally, of course, we use our neck for things like back handsprings, where we need to be able to whip it backwards for back flips, where we tuck our neck into our body, even for jumping, where we'll throw our head up in the air. So again, rate of force development, important. The neck is the end of your core, and if you're training your abs and your erector spinae, then you need to be training your neck as well. And in fact, failure to do so can cause problems and imbalances, as we'll see in a moment. So that's why you should be training your neck. The next question is, how do you go about doing it? Conventional wisdom says that working your traps and your lats with things like deadlifts and shrugs is going to be enough to strengthen your neck. However, as Jeff Nippard explained in his excellent video on this topic, studies actually show that training your neck directly is far superior for increasing neck mass and therefore probably neck strength. Well, the main advice you'll hear is to use plate curls. So you place a plate on your head or your face and then you curl your neck in order to move the weight plate with just your neck. You normally use your hands to steady the weight and you can put a thin towel between the plate and your face if it is uncomfortable. You're gonna be lying on a bench so your head is just over the edge and then you're gonna move just the neck. And I say the hands are only there to steady the weight and make sure it doesn't fall. You don't wanna use too heavy a weight here. Five to 10 pounds is more than enough. If it goes well, then you can do this about three times a week. If you read around the web and watch a lot of videos, then you'll hear about three common exercises to do this with. One is the neck flexion, where you're simply moving the head forwards, tilting the chin towards the chest. One is neck extension, where you're tilting backwards to look up at the ceiling. And then you have lateral flexion, which is tilting your head to either side. You can also use a head harness, and this allows you to actually dangle a weight from your head or attach it to a cable pulley. I bought one especially for this video. They do make it a little bit more convenient to train. However, they're also ridiculous looking and you'll feel like a complete lemon in your gym. 
you look a bit like GIMP of some sort. So my actual preference is to use isometric training and self-resistance. In other words, I like to take my hand, place it on my head in the correct place, and then push against my head in order to work the necessary muscles. And you do this in all the same directions and all the same planes of movement and you can train your neck that way. This is an overcoming isometric. Normally you'd use 100% force. I don't recommend you do that to begin with because you could get a strained neck. Rather aim for about 80%. You should hold each one of these for about six seconds and I recommend doing about three repetitions. However, studies show that isometric training like this will only train roughly 30 degrees of movement, meaning that you need to train at least three points along each plane. So that way you'll cover the entire range of motion. So you're gonna do three different positions for three reps that's a total of nine reps for each movement and you're doing three movements and it shouldn't take too long. You can easily do this at the end of a workout or you could just do it whilst you're watching TV. It's really convenient. But those are not the only reasons that I prefer doing isometrics. One, it keeps the resistance constant. You'll find this is a big problem when you're doing plate curls, when you're using a head harness because as your neck changes angle, of course, the weight is changing angle as well. However, when you use your own hand, you can make sure it stays nice and constant. And the other reason I like it is it allows us to actually train more planes of motion. So actually there are three more ways you can move your neck and three more ways to train it. You also have neck rotation, which of course is turning your head left to right, which is really important for tracking things. It's also really important for preventing that concussive damage. Imagine you're taking a hook to the side of the face. It's gonna be your rotation that makes sure you don't completely whip your head back. Likewise, you have protraction, which means pushing your head forwards, jutting your chin and forehead outwards. And then you have retraction, where you're moving your head backwards as though you're trying to shrink it back into your own neck and give yourself no chins. A lot of people leave out this training, even though it's actually some of the most important types of neck training, the reason being that you need advanced equipment to be able to do it. Of course you don't if you're just using your own hand. So I highly recommend isometric training for this. Now, one of the big and most contentious exercises for training your neck is of course the neck bridge. And I've gone into more detail on this on my website. Generally the bottom line, you can follow the link in the description down below. But generally the bottom line is don't do it because the risk to reward ratio just isn't worth it. Most people don't need it. And as Jeff Cavalier explains in his video, his excellent video on this topic, it can actually create neck spurs over time because it's a closed chain movement. So it's not about doing it incorrectly. It's not about not being strong enough. It's just simply about your body adapting to this kind of pressure and thereby making an impingement more likely. But if you wanna go even further beyond then what is worth it is training the proprioception of the neck, training the balance of the neck and helping us to do all that stuff I was talking about at the beginning, keeping our head steady when running and jumping, helping us to balance better, etc. And some great techniques for doing this come from ballerina science. One of the issues that we have to address is the fact that a lot of us have imbalances in our neck musculature. And this is even more prevalent today because so many of us spend ages sitting at a computer or texting on our phones with our heads pointing down. For instance, many of us will have overcompensation in our sternocleidomastoid muscles and weaker transverse abdomini, and this can end up causing you to have a jutting out chin at all times. Of course, making balance much more difficult, of course, making you look far less agile and graceful, and of course, making you an easy target for a left hook. Likewise, many people carry tension and tightness in their neck all day long, so we need to address this. So how do we do that? Well, in the first instance, of course, we would need to train and strengthen our transverse abdomini, and you've seen plenty of tips from me on how to do that with things like the hollow body, even plank, front levers. In other words, think of your neck as part of your core and make sure it's evenly developed. At the same time, you should also be stretching and relaxing and loosening those neck muscles as well as strengthening them, looking from side to side and up and down and then rolling your head around on the spot. Likewise, for static stretches, you can just gently push slightly beyond the comfortable range of motion, of course, not hurting yourself, being very gentle and careful. You do this at the end of a workout. And likewise, you need to maintain proper posture throughout the day and be more aware of that posture. I shared a cool video a while back um, on how Arnie improves his posture by standing up against a wall. But I recently learned an even cooler tip from Ballerina Badass, which will tell you how to hold your neck like a ballerina. Basically, you pretend that your head is being pulled up by your ears. So you slightly straighten your neck like that and that'll bring your chin in. Then you slightly bring your chin up. And the tip she gives is to imagine that you're completely disdainful of whoever you're looking at. And as soon as you think like that, your neck nicely straightens out. And when you do this, it allows you to bring in your transverse abdomini and open up your hip rotators and all of this makes you lighter. She explains it like being a puppet. You're kind of lifted up by your neck and head. And this allows you to move much more freely and lightly with the rest of your body. You'll be far more stable. Your balance will improve just by practicing this one thing. And it all starts with the neck. 
And then you can practice listening to those muscle spindles by trying to keep your head nice and level, by trying to keep it perfectly still looking forwards whilst you're engaging in a range of different movements. And that'll help your balance with time, even though it might be a little bit more difficult to begin with. For example, if you're doing a pistol squat or something, this is the perfect kind of movement to really be aware of your neck, to keep it nice and steady, and to move slowly through that range of motion. I also recommend training with faster movements. I've talked in the past about how valuable things like cartwheels can be as part of your warm-up, as well as tracking objects. Sports in general are fantastic, and things like flips, handsprings, etc. A kip-up involves the neck to a large degree. As you can see then, neck training is about much more than just plate curls. The cervical spine is the crucial endpoint of core stability and is the prime instigator of movement and balance. Greater strength in this area will improve your posture, your ability, your balance, your resilience, and your ability to leap into action, turning you into an apex predator on the pitch and in life. I hope you found that video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like, comment down below, and let me know if I've missed out anything that you used to train your neck. But lots more like this on the way, and of course, we're nearly now at 100,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. I've got some really cool stuff coming to celebrate that. I'm gonna return to some of the most popular topics on this channel, so if that sounds cool, then hit the subscribe button and stick around. Of course, as many of you know, I've also recently released a PDF ebook. You can find information about that in the link down below and it's selling extremely well. So thank you so much for all the support there. It's been fantastic. Also includes a full training plan, which incorporates stuff like this into a training regime so that you're training more than just muscle. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks a ton for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.